Hello, I was just on News Nation. Uh, I was on there for a short segment where I was asked to kind of give a response to an interview with Dave Grush. There was a one hour interview. And uh, he made, he, Dave Grush is a guy who you probably heard of. If you haven't, then you should probably go and watch the segments before you listen to this, otherwise it will make no sense. He is a whistleblower who is making claims that there are alien craft that the government, the US government has recovered and also other governments have recovered. And this was like the first release of his big interview where uh, he was going to reveal all the secrets or at least what he could reveal. And I was one of the people who was asked on in the show afterwards to give uh, my response and answer a few questions. I didn't get to speak very much. Uh, the host, Brian, uh, seemed interested in asking me, and he asked me twice, like, do you think he is lying? Uh, it's kind of a gotcha question, I think, because I, maybe he's lying, maybe he isn't. Maybe he believes what he's saying. You know, maybe it's accurate, it doesn't seem very likely, but uh, I don't think it's necessarily lying. He just could well just believe what he's saying and be wrong. Anyway, I only made a couple of points uh, on that, and so I thought I would, since I have my notes in front of me here, I thought I would go over my notes and say the things that I would have said had I had more time. So the first thing, obviously, uh, with this case is that there isn't actually any real evidence yet. All we have are the claims of David Grush, who is making a lot of very extraordinary claims, but they're all based on either things he says are secret or things he says that somebody told him, which apparently are not secret. Now, the claims are quite extraordinary. And extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Uh, the first claim is that several alien craft have been recovered. Some of them crashed, some of them landed, and the occupants left the craft and they were captured by the US government. Uh, some of these craft had alien bodies in. Aliens have murdered humans. That's a pretty significant, pretty significant claim, I think, that really needs some evidence. Uh, he said, that seems to be the case. When he was asked, have aliens murdered humans? He said, that seems to be the case. He see, he's saying that there is more than one type of alien and that the aliens, uh, some of the aliens are malevolent, you know, evil aliens. He said that some of the craft are very large, the size of a football field. Uh, his, uh, an associate of his, who is a lawyer, Danny Sheenan, who's part of this whole team, has also been talking to some of the eyewitnesses and says that one of the eyewitnesses says that a craft was the size of a football field, but only on the inside. And uh, on the outside, it was only 30 feet wide. So it's kind of like the TARDIS in Doctor Who. It uses Doctor Who physics. It's bigger on the inside than the outside. And I was wondering if this this uh, craft described by Danny Sheenhan, uh, the football's field size craft is the same as the one that Dave Grush saw. Uh, one landed in Italy in 1933 and was captured by the United States in 1944 with the help from the Vatican, which is uh, pretty interesting. Apparently the Vatican knows all about this and uh, helped facilitate this UFO being transferred from Italy. Now this, uh, uh, he also claims that there is a sophisticated disinformation campaign fooling the public and Congress. They don't even read in the president. He says the president is referred to as a temporary employee, so they don't read in the president to these things. So this is this massive secret. We have these alien craft. Uh, these aliens are murdering people. And the American government, apparently, he suggests, have been murdering people also to cover this up. He also strongly hinted that there was an agreement between the American government and these aliens, some kind of agreement. He was kind of cagey about it, and he says, oh, we should look into it. Uh, but he, he pretty much intimated that this was the case, and there was some document shown that, uh, that he wrote that mentioned this agreement. So... I think the biggest problem with this, other than that these claims are... Uh, outlandish and uh, ridiculous and don't have any evidence behind them. The biggest problem with this is that these claims have been cleared by the government. This is something I mentioned on the program, but I think it's worth mentioning again in the context of what the claims actually are. Yeah, you know, there's a, a government body called DOPSHA, the Department Office of Pub Pre-Publication and Security Review. When you want to publish something uh, like a TV interview or a book, 
uh, and you are covered by classification, you, you're, you have a security clearance, uh, even if you've left the government, you have to go through DOPSA. And they have to look at this thing before it's published, this pre-publication, and do a security review. So they've got to look at it and they've got to see, does this reveal any classified information? And so they looked at everything he said. They looked at things and they says, oh yeah, okay, so he's claiming that uh, the US government is killing people. He's claiming that uh, aliens are killing people. He's claiming that there might be a secret agreement with aliens. He's claiming we have all these alien crafts and we've been reverse engineering it and we've been illegally giving this uh, technology to industry. This is another thing he said. We've been illegally giving this technology to industry and use it, allowing them to exploit it and then sell it back to the government and make loads of money. And this is, this is, uh, 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 this is going on. Uh, this is fine. Mm, this is all fine. This is not secret. This is not secret. Dopsa has cleared everything that he has said. So none of this stuff is secret, which kind of begs the question, uh, why has nobody mentioned this before? Why has no one mentioned the fact that aliens are killing people? Why has no one mentioned the fact that the US government has this secret program like selling alien technology to industry? Why hasn't this actually been revealed? Why hasn't it been discussed? Why hasn't anybody raised it in Congress? It's not secret. It's, it's not classified, according to Dave Grush, because it's all being cleared by DOPSA. Uh, so the alternative, you know, to this mystery, is DOPS are actually just saying, "Oh, go ahead; it doesn't really matter." Yes, the U.S. government kills people and has a secret uh, agreement with uh, with murderous aliens. Yeah, that's not a secret; everybody knows that. The alternative to that ridiculous scenario is that what he's saying isn't actually true. You know, what he's saying is, yeah, you know, maybe not a lie from his perspective, but something he has been told. That is false. He may well have been told that aliens killed people. He may well have been told that aliens are uh, murdering people and uh, that we found alien bodies in crafts and that the American government is covering it up by killing people and is selling technology to, to Lockheed Martin at, uh, illegally. But that's all false. That's the actually the only scenario that makes sense here. The only scenario that makes sense because... It is all cleared by DOPSA. And, you know, again, this is a point I made on the show. I'm not sure it was, it wasn't immediately followed by Brian. He didn't really understand what I was talking about at first. But, you know, that's, that's essentially what's going on. Uh, so, that was kind of my main point that I wanted to make. But there's, there's a bunch of other issues. Like, there's the cover up problem. The cover up problem is how do you keep such a thing quiet for 80 years? Isn't it just saying it's the American government has some crashed spaceships and we've been covering it up and the Vatican's helping us? He isn't just saying that. He's saying all the major governments, all the major powers throughout the world you have this. So at the very least, that is Russia and China. And there's this somehow there's this Cold War going on where they're doing this and we're doing it and they're doing it. It's all secret. I guess we have some kind of a agreement or understanding where nobody tells you know, the, that the other country is actually dealing with murderous aliens. Uh, and this seems like a very difficult thing to cover up. It would require, if you think about what's going on here, you know, you've got, you've got government, you've got the military, you've got academia, you've got, uh, you've got industry. You got all these people, and apparently they, a lot of people in there know about this. So if, if you're feeding these these technologies to to Lockheed Martin and other people, then obviously lots of people are going to know about it. Thousands of people, you know, over the years, like tens and thousands of people. So it's been going on since the 1940s, apparently. And also in other countries, same thing in other countries. And not just like, you know, other stable countries like Britain, where we've got like a friendly relationship, but countries like Russia which uh, used to be the Soviet Union, it used to be several other countries. It used to include Ukraine and uh, uh, Latvia, Lit Lithuania and Estonia and a bunch of other countries, Kazakhstan, countries like that. And it broke up, the Soviet Union broke up into all these separate countries. Different people took power, you know, hold different kettle of fish. You know, China, after the Second World War, went through like the Cultural Revolution, completely separate things, separated into China and Taiwan. Lots of different things going on. And yet somehow, 
all these countries that are going through all these regime changes have managed to uh, keep this secret and not let it be revealed. And kind of the excuse they give is that, oh, we've kind of made it so it seems silly. So if someone releases information, they'll just be laughed at. And, uh, you know, that's how we, it hasn't got out in the last 70 years. It seems uh, kind of ridiculous. Okay, then another thing I wanted to bring up was just a simple do the math. This is something they kind of glossed over in the interview. In the interview, uh, Ross Colthart, the interviewer, who you know, really isn't like an investigative journalist in this case, he's really more of an advocate because he believes strongly that this is happening and he's basically trying to make the case. But that, that aside, that aside, Ross Colthart, the interviewer in this case, uh, so you know, why are they crashing? You know, why are they crashing? And um, and and Dave Grush said something along the lines, you know, well, you know, you know, we make cars and things, and we make them as well as we can, but sometimes, sometimes they crash. Sometimes planes crash. And you know, even though these aliens are probably more advanced than us, they probably still crash sometimes too. But you know, I think let's do the math here. Let's do the math. These aliens, yeah, they're more advanced than us, so they're probably going to be a lot, the craft are probably going to be a lot safer than ours. You think they'd have these automated systems. It's like, you know, like a Tesla now will stop if you try to run into somebody. It used to be, you used to be able to run people over, now, now they stop automatically. Uh, they probably have much more advanced versions of that. You know, I think probably at least 100 years more advanced than what we have, maybe 10,000 years, maybe a million years more advanced. So they've, they've got safer craft. Think about how many accidents, how many serious plane crashes we have. We usually only have like one, one a year or something like that in the United States. You think about the last big plane crash that happened in the United States. I can't even remember it. I think it was a few years ago. So, you know, planes crash every year or so. We're also told that UFOs crash every every year or so, you know, every few years, maybe like every five years, something like that. Because, But they're a bit safer, aren't they? But consider how many planes there are in the sky at any one time. There is like 30,000 commercial flights every day. These are the, the proper commercial flights, you know, New York to Boston type thing. It's like real commercial flights, you know, just going across the country, big planes. 30,000 of them. There's actually more like 45,000 if you count all the small planes as well, the general aviation planes, every day. And yeah, we only have about one crash every year or every few years. And we have a similar number of crashes of UFOs, which are probably much safer, which means there's probably more UFOs, many more UFOs in the sky than there are planes. If you take this simple math and extrapolate it, if there's 30,000 like, significant planes in the sky, that probably means there's hundreds of thousands of UFOs in the sky every day for them to crash at this rate. Unless they've got like a failure percentage of like, you know, 1% or something. They're just constantly dropping out of the sky for some bizarre reason. There would have to be hundreds of thousands. Uh, even Dave Grush says, like, oh, they're going to be like our cars. They crash sometimes. You know, they're, they're like the planes, they crash sometimes. But if, if they are like our planes, there would have to be hundreds of thousands of them in the sky. NORAD doesn't see them. The FAA doesn't see them. Other pilots, they see loads of the planes all the time. They don't see these hundreds of thousands of UFOs. People don't take photographs of them. I, I see planes all the time when I'm walking my dog. I see, probably see like 10, 20 planes on a typical like, walk of half an hour. I can take, I take photos of them all the time. If there's even more UFOs than that, why don't I see them? Some of them are supposedly big, the size of a football field. Don't see those. Arrow... The NASA's, uh, not NARO's, the Pentagon's official body that's searching for these these things, they don't see hundreds of thousands of UFOs every day. What do arrows see? They've seen a few balloons, a few silver spheres that are floating through the air. They've seen a few optical illusions. You know, most of what they see isn't actually even a real UFO. It's stuff like a distant plane. They showed one at the NASA hearing, which is just three dots in the distance, and the camera was moving around, making it look weird this uh, Middle East sphere that they, they showed on this, this show I was just on. It's just probably just a balloon. You know, it's parallax effect, just a very common thing. It's green triangles. Uh, they're, not, they're not even UFOs at all. So that there's, they're not seeing any UFOs. And yet, if they're crashing one every year or so, there would have to be hundreds of thousands of them in the sky. So perhaps they just don't exist.
perhaps it's not actually true. So <clears throat> I guess a few other points. Uh, yeah, I'm a skeptic. I was brought on for being the skeptic viewpoint and skeptics, I think, would like this cleared up. I would like the government to investigate, please. Congress, if you are listening, please investigate. I call upon Congress to investigate this thing. You know, people are always saying, Mick, why don't you call upon Congress to investigate this? It's kind of silly. Like It's not like you, know, you can't simply call upon Congress to investigate. But yeah, that's what I'm doing. I, I, I agree with the calls on Congress to investigate. Not trying to stop it at all. Just pointing out how ridiculous the claims are. We need to look into the situation as a whole. You know, why do we have this situation? Why do we have people who claim to work in the program, which is what they call it, apparently, the program, and uh, what's actually going on? You know, what I think is going on, I think it's probably uh, the program is a crash retrieval and reverse engineering program. And I think what they are retrieving is crashed foreign uh, craft, like uh, Russian fighter jets, uh, Russian drones, Chinese fighter jets, Chinese uh, submarines, uh, Russian submarines. You know, we once, I think it was like 1976, we spent $3 billion in today's money recovering a uh, Russian submarine, top secret program. And uh, we would have taken that submarine and uh, reverse engineered the heck out of it. And it would have been super secret. And the people working on that program might not have known what they were working on because they'd be just like, hey, here's a bit of metal, like, you know, check it out. And then someone else would synthesize that data into the, the greater understanding of what was going on. But not everybody who works in the program is going to be read into every single thing that's going on because you want to keep it secret. Which may well be why we've arrived at this situation. There's a secret program of crash retrievals and reverse engineering that uh, the UAP task force wasn't allowed to look into because it's super secret and what does the UAP task force need to know about Russian submarines and Chinese jets? So we got this um, misunderstanding and everybody's like, hmm, must be UFOs. And then people working in the program are like, yeah, I got this really weird bit of metal. He had these strange isotope ratios. No idea what it is. I think it's UFOs. And someone else is like, yeah, did you hear about Malmstrom? No, no. Oh, Malmstrom, yeah, the UFO shot down some shut down some nuclear weapons like back in the um was it sixties, fifties, long time ago. And then I think this UFO mythology kind of kind of gets into this whole situation and these people start talking and some people become convinced and then they start reading stuff. They start folding in other bits of mythology. Like some people who've worked in government and also outside of government kind of fold in things that they did, like analyzing bits of metal. There's this famous bit of metal but that uh, has these multiple layers. Linda Moulton Howe had it. I believe she got it from Art Bell and then sold it to Tom DeLong and then Tom DeLong sold it to his own company. But it's just a multi-layered bit of, of uh, magnesium and bismuth, which people are like, what is this thing? It's probably just a bit of an industrial process byproduct or something that somebody sent in on a lark to Art Bell like 30 years ago. But that seems to be what, seems to be what Dave Grush is talking about, this meta-material. I very much suspect that's actually what he's talking about. But anyway, I'm kind of getting a little bit off topic here. But what was I talking about? Yeah, we want an investigation. <laughs> we want to figure out what's going on. Because uh, if if it's just like a bunch of people, you know, there's a real secret program, but a bunch of people think this secret program is actually an alien crash retrieval program, that's kind of messed up. You know, it's kind of like there's um, a systemic and cultural failure within the intelligence community due in part to excessive secrecy because no one's allowed to talk about anything and this 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 failure this systemic failure the failure of the system is allowing false beliefs and magical thinking to grow so people end up thinking that they're there's a they're working on a crash retrieval program of of, of alien ufos when they're actually not and then all these stories kind of grow in the telling Anyway, so yeah, the UFO mythology is uh, contains things that Dave Grush talked about. UFO mythology talks about this this uh, well Roswell. Obviously, he just basically gave the standard uh, believer version of Roswell. The Malmstrom instrument incident with the nuclear weapons going offline. Uh, that's something that, that happened, and there's a report of one security guard seeing a glowing red orb at some point 
in a different location. You can read more about it on Metabunk. Just look for Malmstrom. There's a whole bunch of investigations into that, but there's really not a lot to it. Uh, Mussolini's UFO in 1922, 33, and uh, recovered by the U.S. with the help of the Vatican. That's kind of a new thing, but basically it's UFO mythology. Doctor Who physics. Uh, you know, this isn't something that Dave Grush said, but you know the lawyer he's working with, uh, Sheenan, like said that one of the craft was bigger on the inside than the outside. This is typical of UFO mythology. People have given similar accounts, and he's kind of, I think, he's and perhaps other people are folding in other accounts of UFO mythology into something of a real situation. Oh, before I forget, another thing Dave Grush said was that the head of Arrow. Yeah, everyone's saying that Arrow, this this Pentagon task force, which is looking into UFOs, cannot um, look into these programs because he doesn't have Title 50 clearance. However, Dave Garush says he talked to Sean Kirkpatrick and that Sean Kirkpatrick could have looked into this and could have discovered the same things that Dave Garush said. Now, Ross... Colfart will tell you this is not true because he doesn't have Title 50 clearance. But the guy who does have Title 50 clearance, Dave Garush, just told us, just told us in an interview with Ross, that uh, Sean Kirkpatrick could look into it and could discover the same things. Maybe Sean Kirkpatrick looked into it and discovered nothing. Maybe Sean Kirkpatrick, as is implied in the interview, is part of a giant cover-up. I tend to think the former, uh, the first one. Dave Kirkpatrick looked into it, didn't find anything to substantiate it. Arrow has said they've talked to lots of whistleblowers who have told them this is a secret program and they've not been able to find any evidence to substantiate it. And I think that's just what's going on. Some broader issues here. Actually, let me do some more specific issues here first. I made some notes during this year. Malmstrom, dimensions, oh yes. So he was kind of speculating a lot about extra dimensions and this is how the craft traveled from one location to the other which sounded very science fiction to me you know he said it's he has a degree in physics um i mean a degree in physics is great it's great it's not like a phd in physics and he, i don't know how much physics he's actually done over the years but he seems convinced that there's this particular mechanism where uh, extra dimensions as defined by quantum physics can be used for rapid travel or perhaps the creatures themselves are coming from another dimension like you know there's kind of parallel universes perhaps a different spatial level above you know to the side or you know diagonal because it's an extra dimension uh, and the the creatures are interdimensional beings he didn't want to necessarily say you know they're aliens from another planet you know that's a little bit silly they could be beings from another dimension or they could have be beings from another planet that traveled here via another dimension or via folding the dimensions in a, in a strange way. It seemed basically like he was repeating a bunch of science fiction. Uh, there was a short segment on the videos, which, you know, obviously, like if you look at my, my channel, I do a lot of work analyzing these UFO videos. He mentioned a couple of them, not a lot, didn't discuss very much details. They brought up Gimbal, one of my favorite videos, and uh, he was asked, you know, uh, I think Ross says something, oh, there's a whole bevy of debunkers on the internet who have said things about this. Well, it's mostly me. It's mostly me who's been saying things about the Gimbal video. I've done these very detailed analyses, and you can, you can check them out. So he said, oh, yeah, I've looked at that with people who know about the app Flair, and because of, like, you know, stuff like the, the pixel saturation, uh, it's, it's not... It's not a plane. Yeah, we don't know what it is, but you know, uh, it's not a plane. Pixel saturation didn't really say very much, but what he did say about pixel saturation reminded me of a person he would know on the UAP task force called Travis Taylor. Now, Travis Taylor is a guy with two PhDs, one in optics and the other one, I think, I believe, in aerospace systems mechanics or something, it's aerospace science, but. Clever guy, got two PhDs. He was the chief scientist of the UAP task force. He's also a TV scientist. He appears on Ancient Aliens, where he's constantly going on with great excitement about how some hieroglyph he sees on a wall is actually evidence that aliens have visited us in the past. He's also a TV scientist on the show uh, The Secrets of Skinwalker Ranch. 
where he plays again another very excitable scientist. It's, I mean, it's not I say plays. I mean, it's supposed to be real. Is this supposed? It's supposed to be actually him. He appears as a very excitable scientist who makes these ridiculous errors of science and these ridiculous leaps of uh, of inference in things and says things like, uh, "Well, that rocket went up and then it kind of veered a bit to the left. Maybe there's a portal above the ranch." I mean, this is pretty much verbatim the type of thing he says. So yeah, it's just entertainment, but he and the he's basically he's claiming that this is actual science. He's claiming they're doing real science. Obviously, they are not, but uh, you know, this is what he claims. And the science he has done has been very poor. He presented a paper once, well, not a paper, like a a presentation at a UFO conference, where he was showing the gimbal video the gimbal video and he pointed out that he had these little wibbly lines on it and so he said like these wibbly lines are interference fringes because there was like some moment where the camera got bumped and then the light pathways went through two things at the same time and they interfered with each other and we can use this interference of two different frames to figure out how far away this object is so we did all this math using these, these sine waves that the, he determined were in this image and came up with answer. Problem was, this wibbling on the line wasn't actually something to do with the internal optics of the system, which his PhD might have been able to address. It was uh, interlacing. The cameras that, uh, that recorded this video use interlaced video, which means that every other line on the video is recorded one frame off from another. So when something moves rapidly, which is the camera was moving in this instance, things end up looking jaggy like this. So what he was seeing wasn't an interference pattern. It was just two frames of the image and the, the jaggies of, of the in interlacing. And he wasn't looking at the original video. He was looking at a version of the video he downloaded from YouTube. And the smooth sine wave was because he was a blurred out, low resolution version uh, of the video and it smoothed it out. So anyway, basically it was, his entire analysis was complete nonsense and it's typical of the type of mistakes that he makes, but everyone respects him because he's two PhDs and so they don't question him, which I think is perhaps speaking to the, the systemic and cultural failure that I was discussing earlier. You know, people don't question each other. And there's a lot of secrecy, so you can't ask certain questions. So you've got this combination of things, excessive deference to people who you think know the right answer, and uh, secrecy. And so people end up believing things. But you know, kind of back to the analysis. So Dave Garush says saturation, you know, pixel saturation. That is analysis that Travis Taylor did. And Travis Taylor did this analysis and said that these pixels are too saturated for the distance. And uh, that means that it couldn't actually be a plane. So this is his, this is theory. But problem is, he's basing this uh, saturation issue on, again, low resolution video, uh, res uh, video that has a low color depth. The actual original video is in 14 bits, you know, technical thing, but 14 bits is a lot more than 8 bits, which is what you get when you look at the video that's on YouTube. So again, his analysis was kind of garbage in, garbage out. And I uh, do not think that uh, Travis Taylor's assessment is correct. There's a, there's a long thread of it on it on Metabunk explaining all the math and the science. And if Dave Garush is basing his assessment on Travis Taylor, his buddy from the UAP task force, then I don't think that's correct either. Uh, but if he wants to talk about it, if he wants to, uh, you know, debate it or something, he's now a public citizen. He's free to uh, to like publish his own analysis of the public video gimbal. So why don't you go ahead, Dave Grush, publish this this thing? So you probably didn't do the analysis, did you? You just repeated Travis Taylor's analysis, which was wrong. All right, so. Uh, more broader issues. I'll actually finish off this. Oh, the Omaha Sphere. Omaha Sphere, uh, another video that they brought up. And they didn't really say very much about it. I think Ross says, well, it's either shooting away into the distance or it's going into the ocean. And I think, I can't remember what he says, something like it's going into the ocean. But he analyzed that video 
it's not too complicated. You zoom in, look at the very end of it where it disappears. What happens is the, the object doesn't look like it's actually going into the water. It looks like it's going behind the horizon. Let me just grab a flashlight and demonstrate. Uh, here is a flashlight pointing at the camera. Now, if something goes behind the, uh, the horizon, you'll see it kind of like, you know, go, you'll see half of it and then you'll see n none of it. You know, it'll disappear behind the horizon. Now, if a bright light, if something goes into the water, sorry, same thing, same thing. If a bright light goes down and it goes, if it goes into the water, it's just going to blink out. It's going to disappear. If it goes behind the horizon, what happens is it just gets smaller and shrinks and disappears. This is what we see in the Omaha Sphere video. We see a light that is shrinking and disappearing. We know it's an infrared, which means it's a heat source that is shrinking and disappearing. Something going into the water wouldn't do that. This is something that is going behind the horizon. It's being gradually obscured by the horizon and don't know what it is, but it's not something that's going into the water. So again, that analysis is wrong. Okay, those are my little points that I had that I wrote down. So just some broader points. Uh, this story is coming from the usual suspects. The story was originally written by Leslie Kane and Ralph Blumenthal. They wanted to publish it in New York Times. New York Times turned them down. They wanted to publish it in the Washington Post. The Washington Post wanted to fact check it and they were taking too long fact checking it. Now, uh, Dave Grush's name was unfortunately leaked onto the internet uh, about a month ago by, by the lawyer on the team, uh, Danny Sheehan, who he has blurted it out. He has a kind of a, a no-filter approach to talking, Danny Sheehan. And so they, the, his name was being brought up, and so they wanted to move it forward. Washington Post didn't have enough time to uh, publish it, uh, to fact check it before they published it. So it was published in the Debrief, which is this uh, much smaller site that's very kind of UFO friendly. They do a lot of UFO stories and, uh, and they published it. Probably did some fact checking, but I mean, th we know that his credentials are good, but how much fact checking can you do in that short amount of time? So Leslie Keen and Ralph Blumenthal, they wrote the original New York Times story. Yeah, Leslie Keen and Ralph Blumenthal are also big kind of uh, UFO people. Uh, Leslie Keen has written a lot about UFOs. She's also written books about uh, life after death and the afterlife. Ralph Blumenthal has written books about alien abduction. He wrote a biography of uh, John Mack called The Believer, uh, which is about how John Mack uh, thinks he has all this evidence of alien abductions by interviewing a lot of people and believing them all. They're Rob Blumenthal and Leslie Keen, um, I think, are kind of the more credulous journalists, but they're also fairly careful journalists to a degree, to a degree, in that they don't want to alienate people. And this is something that, uh, you know, kind of a poor choice of words there, alienate, uh, they don't want to turn people off by having the story seem too silly. And Leslie Keane, Levy Kane, sorry, Leslie Kane uh, has said explicitly you know, a number of times that there were things in the, they didn't report in the New York Times story uh, because they were too, too extreme. She said of this story that she didn't talk about the bodies with, uh, with Dave Grush. She seemed quite surprised that this, ev this even came up, that there were bodies. And so uh, when, when you know, she heard about it, she was says like, oh, I never talked to him about that. I don't want to talk about that. And I wouldn't have put it in the story had I had talked about it. So she's like, you know, retrieved alien craft, that's one thing, but retrieved alien bodies, that's a step too far. That'll just make us seem silly. And of course, there's far sillier things that have come out since then. And I'd be very interesting to hear Leslie Kane's uh, opinion on aliens have murdered people. What do you think of that, Leslie? Or uh, uh, the America has murdered people to cover up the fact that aliens are exist and have been murdering people. And there's these, these massive cover-ups. Uh, some, some crafts are, are bigger on the inside than the outside, like the TARDIS, um, you know, things like And there's this massive campaign of, of, of cover-ups. So, you know, the, they're trying to make it palatable, but obviously it's gone beyond that. And other people who are reporting on this seem similarly cautious. They're now like, oh, well, I'm not saying that he's right. I'm saying he's a very credible person like uh, Bryce Zabel. Uh, Zabel. 
uh, was saying that, he, and he was the one who kind of said first that uh, aliens had killed people. Or there was the male malevolent aliens. That's the thing. There's apparently two different races of aliens, one of which is malevolent, which is uh, very interesting. Uh, so other people like and this Ross Coulthard, he uh, is kind of is an investigative journalist who's worked on sixty minutes. Yeah, but you know, mostly what he does now is he does stories about UFOs, and he spent months preparing for this particular story because this is the big story this is the big story and he knows it's a big story so this is pretty much all he's done he's uh he's been preparing for this story when he's interviewing um uh, dave garush he's not like he's a hard-hitting journalist i mean sure he says like are you crazy dave garush have you been diagnosed with mental illness which is you know a stupid question really you need to be a bit more subtle than that because obviously the answer to that is no <clears throat> anyway, so uh, Ros Colthart, UFO journalist, basically pushing the UFO narrative. Gary Nolan apparently is uh, behind the scenes. I've heard that Gary Nolan is behind the scenes uh, helping with this, and he's been one of the people who's been introducing uh, Ross, uh, Dave Grush to, uh, to other people. So, and, and he's you know one of the, the fixtures in the UFO circuit nowadays. He was on, um, what's his name, Tucker Carlson, and various other shows he's been on is is, is he was at the uh, the U the a ancient aliens conference alien con in Pasadena I saw him there shook his hand seems like a nice guy alien believer he has some kind of alien experience maybe not aliens maybe just some kind of you know, altered reality experience as a child like aliens in his room uh, UFO flying over but he's a guy who's basically already decided like 10 years ago that the alien narrative is correct and has been trying to uh, promote it in what we call the Invisible College, which is this, this group of people acting in academia and in, in the military and the intelligence community to promote uh, disclosure of UFOs because they believe that UFOs are, are aliens. Uh, other people, you've probably heard of Lou Elizondo, yeah, he was somebody who was brought forward by Leslie Kane and Ralph Blumenthal during the, the first story back in 2017. Uh, he is involved, by all accounts, behind the scenes in this, this current story. I'm sure he won't deny it if you ask him it. Eric Davis is uh, someone who's been around for a long time. May well be one of the sources. He's, he's like a, uh, a physicist. And he works. Uh, I don't know where he works actually. I have to I have to verify that. But you know, he's he's someone who's told similar stories, and apparently has briefed Congress or you know briefed someone who briefed Congress and said we have technology of off-world origin. This was a story a while back. You know, one really took it up because like who is Eric Davis? Uh, but now we've got you know the big dogs. We've got uh, Dave Garush who has this Title Fifty clearance, who's much better than Eric Davis, but basically is telling the same story. I mean, Eric Davis, I'm sure has been advising. Hal Putoff, really old one, well, don't mean it in a bad way, but uh, uh, old school in that goes back a long way into the history of ufology. He did some of the original uh, Project Stargate research for the government when the government was believing in, in the supernatural and they thought they could do remote viewing. Project Stargate, they, they looked into, like, you know, can we spy on the Russians? Uh and uh, with using using psychic powers and can we kill goats by staring at them it's a movie made men who stare at goats based on a true story hal putoff was there hal putoff has been uh, in, uh, involved over the years on this and he's he's involved now he's probably one of the people that dave Goresh has talked to again ask him i doubt he will deny it so these are all names that have been in ufology for many years and some for many decades and it seems to me that they are promoting their own beliefs rather than genuinely reporting and investigating on a case. They want to promote UFO disclosure because they already believe it to be true. So they believe Dave Goresh's story, which is part of that whole overall systemic and cultural failure where people just believe other people because it, it fits their system and there's no checks and balances and the, no one's encouraged to actually check it and then everything's wrapped in secrecy so we can't actually figure it out then finally you can see why i couldn't fit all this in into the five minutes uh, or less that i actually got to speak probably even less than that it was more like two minutes uh i couldn't fit all this in because there's so much but my last my last point is about 
the paranormal. And Gary Nolan said a couple of months ago, uh, we don't want to talk about the woo. Now, woo is a term used to mean paranormal. It actually was originally used by the skeptical community, but it's kind of been co-opted a little bit by the, uh, the UFO and the paranormal community. And they refer to paranormal as the woo, as in woo, woo, woo scary ghost. But you know, seriously, uh, Gary Nolan says, like, we don't want to talk about the woo because it scares the bejesus out of people. You know, no one wants to be know that you know there are actually ghosts and uh, and uh, malevolent alien entities that the government has a, a pact with uh, at the expense of U.S. lives. No one wants to know that that type of real scary stuff. They don't want to know that aliens are you know reading our minds and that they're appearing in our rooms and that they're they're attaching themselves to our bodies and hitchhiking back from Skinwalker Ranch, which is something that uh, apparently Travis Taylor believes. Uh, you know, he's saying people are scared of that. So let's not mention it. Let's not mention it. Let's not mention the woo. And this is something, you know, that Leslie Kane will agree with. She says, well, I'm not going to talk about the paranormal, even though I know that it's there. Leslie Kane famously has been to seances and uh, has been touched by disembodied hands in those seances. Seems to give a lot of credence to the the reality of, of mediums summoning something from the other side. The woo... As Gary Nolan said, Gary Nolan said, uh, we don't want to talk about the woo, but we all know the woo is just around the corner. That's what he said, and kind of how he said it. And interestingly, when he said it, he was there with uh, a medium, Tyler Henry, famous TV medium, the medium to the stars, Tyler Henry, a very nice young man who speaks to the dead and tells people what the dead tell him about their stories. The woo is just around the corner in ufology. Most people who are into ufology are not very far away from believing in the paranormal, and a lot of them believe in the paranormal. Gary Nolan, I think, believes that there is something to Tyler Henry's claims of being able to speak to the dead, uh, or at least do something, some kind of channeling. And I think he believes uh, kind of what his mentor, uh, Jacques Vallée, believes, that uh, a lot of this alien presence UFOs isn't actually nuts and bolts aliens from another world traveling here on spaceships. It's actually some kind of intradimensional being, perhaps a, like a trickster type person who's faking these UFO incidents as UFOs so that they can disguise what they're actually doing. It's a bit vague on the details, but it's, it's something like that. So the woo is all around. You know, all these people kind of believe to some degree or another in the supernatural. And this is something that is being, being hidden. And I think, though, it kind of came a little bit to the surface with, uh, with Dave Goresh's talks of things like malevolent aliens, malevolent entities. That's the type of thing that you talk about, you know, weird entities like doing evil things to you. Uh, but, yeah, it's, um, it's kind of troubling that this these beliefs actually exist within some people in the intelligence community and apparently more than more than one like several people believe something along those lines probably to different degrees some of them simply believe that there's a crash retrieval program not everyone's going to be like uh, down with the aliens are killing people theory and not everyone's going to be down with his theories of extra dimensions or even the malevolence of, of certain things but there are people who believe that there's an alien crash retrieval program it would be great if it was true i mean i would really like to to uh hear about these aliens you know i'm very much a science fan and a science fiction fan and i'd love to hear about aliens it would be really really interesting i wouldn't care if i was wrong about certain ufos that turn out to be actually aliens of course most most of the things i identified have been definitively identified as things like planes so it wouldn't really change that but it would be amazing if we could actually solve certain cases as being aliens and then there's the whole thing about aliens themselves and all the new science that's going to come along be pretty amazing probably pretty disruptive as well but you know it would be really an interesting time to live in and it, you know if they've been here for a while so they haven't uh, haven't disrupted us yet but it would be super interesting i'm not against it i think uh congress should investigate not because i think they're aliens but because uh this is kind of messed up this situation that we have now 
these claims that are being made and these back and forth things and congressmen being uh, congress people being involved and hearings being held it's kind of messed up dig deep figure out what's going on and uh, let's bring everything out into the sunlight as much as possible and try to clear it up you know unfortunately though i think what we're looking at probably is a classified program called the program which does stuff like crash retrievals and has recovered russian submarines and uh uh, Soviet satellites uh, back in the 70s it was a joint program between Canada and the United States uh, which which you know they recovered bits of that, that satellite and took it to be analyzed there's probably some people who work on those programs who think that it was a, uh, a UFO because they didn't know exactly what they were working on so we may not actually discover the truth hopefully Congress will and hopefully Congress will be able to tell us you know, what the situation is in terms of you know this being not aliens, uh, but people are not going to believe them. People are going to say it's a cover-up and the cycle will just continue. Anyway, those are the points that took me, let me see how long, uh, 45 minutes <laughs> to actually go over in, in great detail. And uh, uh, I just had a few minutes on the show and so I didn't really have the time to do it. Um, love to talk more about it. Anybody wants to, to delve into these details in any more depth uh, anything that I've missed and there probably is stuff the stuff that came up uh, during the interviews anything I've missed uh, I'd love to talk more about it it's a fascinating topic and it's not going away anyway that is my 46 minutes so signing off <laughs>